CTE Pro 1 True Series Video 32. Learn to embrace cue ball deflection. Uh, I see cue ball deflection as a very, very good thing through my eyes. Now, cue ball deflection is essentially an action that happens to the cue ball when you apply some energy with your stroke. Let's say the right side of the cue ball pushes it off to the left. We refer to that as deflection. So if I apply a stroke energy to the left side of the cue ball, then it pushes it off to the right. Well, once upon a time, I spent about 12 years trying to lessen or diminish the amount of deflection that I was getting uh, so that I could hopefully play better. Well, that didn't happen. My game leveled off, uh, uh, stagnated. Perhaps it even went backwards a bit. So if I could back time up to that crossroads 12 or so years ago, I would not uh, have gone with low deflection shafts. I would have stayed right with wood and maple. But what I would have done would have been to uh, go on a mission to learn as much as I could about uh, cue ball deflection and what it is that I can do to better handle it and deal with it. So, uh, I actually love cue ball deflection. I'm now using a very fine playing instrument that consists of a Steve Lomax a custom shaft, 14 millimeters. And this is a, a Mike Capone custom butt. So what we're going to do in this discussion is take a look at how center the edge aiming players use the sight line as a guide for adjusting or not adjusting to deflection that can occur for a given setup. So we're going to look at a couple of setups. Uh, the number one setup that we're going to look at is for the outside spin that we're going to discuss. The object ball is at the one diamond, one diamond intersection. And to arrive at this cue ball location, if you're wanting to execute some of these shots, just place the cue ball at this diamond, move it out, one complete diamond, and then just push it toward the object ball a little bit. And I have you to do that just so that you can make sure to have plenty of room to make a very comfortable bridge on the bed of the table without any interference from uh, the rail. So at the core of this video is going to be how center to edge aiming players use the sight line to adjust when uh, using uh, out the spin side spin, whether it's outside spin or inside spin. Now, it, it's no secret to many of you that center edge aiming players work with two centers on the cue ball, a sight line center and a shot center, uh, shot line center. So the two setups that we're going to work with are each 30 inside. Now, the sight line for this left cut, 30 inside, is center to edge. Now, this is an exaggerated object ball and the sight line is represented by this white line here. Now there's four red markers around the table that represent target locations for the cue ball after having, after having pocketed this left cut 30 inside. All of these shots are going to involve uh, outside spin. The first one that we're going to work with is in this position here. So for this shot, I'm going to send, I'm not going to execute any shots, we're just going to discuss this. So if I were going to send this cue ball around the table to this location right here, what happens? Well, we automatically know you're going to need a lot of side spin to do that. It, it's pretty apparent that we're going to need a lot of speed to execute that type of shot. So the first thing that jumps out at me as far as uh, uh, 
added something very important to this discussion is that when, when you're going to use a lot of horizontal spin, somewhere near the 3 to 9 line, the equator line, is do not place your tip right on the equator line. Make a decision to go either slightly above the equator or below the equator. Now, the reason that you want to do that is because if you just put pure horizontal spin on this ball, that's not a good recipe for controlling the cue ball. It's much easier to control the cue ball to get it to a desired location. When you have a mix, a, 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 a spin ratio, mix of horizontal spin uh, uh, in conjunction with, in this case, I'm going to use a bit of, of, of top spin, just a bit. So, what, what am I going to see and what am I going to do with this fine cueing instrument in order to accomplish that? Well, the number one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I know, just by experience and knowledge, I'm very well aware of what it is that, that I want to do to accomplish this. I want a reasonably level cue, and I'm going to make a decision to have my tip placement to be just above the equator. Now, so when I look at this shot, I know I'm going to have some deflection. So I'm simply going to move the sight line out in space for this particular shot about one-eighth of an object ball, and that's by feet. But it's easy to recognize the amount of adjustment that is made to the sight line for this particular shot. So level Q, a lot of horizontal spin, about two and a half tips, and just above the equator so you can pick up just a little bit of vertical top on that ball. This cue ball is going to come pretty close to this corner right here, doubling this corner, coming down in to this location. Let's discuss the second positional setup. So, okay, where is number two? Number two is right here. This is a different route for the cue ball. You know, every shot is two parts. Make the ball and then get the cue ball particular, to a particular location so that it's to your advantage for being able to continue at the table. So what I'm going to do for this shot is different than what I did for uh, the first shot. So for number two, rather than doubling this corner up here, I'm going to be hitting further over this one, to my left, perhaps about right here. So, I'm going to go below the equator to about, oh, 4 o'clock, somewhere in there, 4, 4.15, let's call it. Uh, and what that means is that I'm going to angle my cue. That angle of my cue is going to have an elevation to it and then my tip position to be at, uh, uh, to be at say, 4 o'clock, 4.15 or so, is going to be angled into the lower right quadrant of the cue ball. Now, when I do that, when I angle my cue with some elevation, and I'm into that lower right quadrant, a couple of things, well, one thing happens is that well, first of all, I'm getting some horizontal spin and I'm getting some back spin. I'm getting the right mix of spin ratio. An important aspect of knowledge here is that I do not have to change the location of the sight line. The sight line remains the same. All professional players know that low outside is a very friendly uh, alignment for using outside spin because you get to cancel out a lot of that unwanted uh, deflection uh, uh, for keeping the sight line the same. So that it's like the curve of the cue ball and the uh, deflection cancel each other out. So it's a very friendly sight for this particular shot. So 
This cue ball, since I'm cueing it a little bit low, is going to go further up the table and come into here like so. So having the knowledge of what to see and having the knowledge of how to work this cueing instrument allows me to uh, have better outcomes with hitting my target location with the cue ball. Okay, uh, position number three. Whoops. Now, you might uh, just notice already that cutting this uh, 30 inside to the corner and sending the cue ball to here is a much softer speed. In fact, it's actually a finesse speed. Um, and the, the energy for a finesse speed would be something, you know, maybe a little bit less than a lag speed. So what's going to happen for this particular shot is that I automatically realize that I'm going to move the sight line in toward the quarter of the cue ball. Regardless of whether I'm using Pro 1, basic CTE, or even disguised pivoting, the sight line is adjusted to here. It's easy to see. It's very easy to notice and very easy to work with because the sight line's here, the sight line's here, the sight line's here. There's, it's, it's not compressed like I experienced a lot with some low reflection shafts. The sight lines were, were tighter into here, and sometimes I couldn't see the difference. So, when I'm executing this shot, uh, I automatically, my, my body is feeding forward to me based on my vast experiences that my cue is going to be elevated, elevated a little bit more. And it's going to be angled down into this lower right quadrant to perhaps say 530 or so. 5, 530. So I'm just moving the sight line to very near that quarter. And see, pool is a very visual game. And my body has to be able to follow with what it takes to be able to get that cue ball where I need it. So when my body follows, it follows with an angled cue. A certain angle. So I don't want to just get up and shoot this shot not understanding what it is that I need to do to execute it. So uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at the, the fourth position for outside spin. See if I can set that up without knocking it over. This one's quite simple. 30 inside, very slow shot. So I basically just do my sweep or my pivot to center. The sight line does not change, so, but I am going to apply just a little bit of outside spin. How do I do that? I'm just gonna swivel my cue in the form of just a little backhand English, uh, perhaps a half a tip or so, uh, so that this angle can open up to come out to this portion of the table. The sight line does not change. So for all these shots, I have a knowledge of what I want to do with my cue angle, whether it's level or angled like that for my spin. Uh, I have a knowledge of visually of what I want to do with the sight line. For shot number one, I move my sight line out here. For shot number two, my sight line was here. For shot number three, my sight line moved to here. For shot number four, my sideline stayed there. This is important knowledge that, that I don't want to go without. Yeah, a good player that's shot a blue million shots can feel these things, and it's a largely a right brain activity. But your left brain wants to be involved in this. So a lot of the things that I'm covering here is, is bringing your, 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 your left brain in, your left brain activity into what's going on. 
it, it's important to have knowledge about what you're doing because your practice and your play can be more effective if, if you do so. Okay, let's take a look at inside spin. All I'm going to do is move the object ball half a diamond down toward this, the nose of this cushion in front of this diamond. So now we have a right cut, and now the sight line is on this side of the object ball. So the center edge line is here. Now, I need to get rid of this, and let's take a look at the first setup. So the first setup is here. So this is my target location for where I want to send the cue ball. So we're just going to discuss that. Uh, I'm using inside spin, so you can probably already imagine. If I'm going to catch this rail and then this rail and come up to here, that's going to take a little bit of speed for sure. It's going to take a lot of inside spin. Now, I'm going to make a decision to have my cue very level and just above the equator of the ball with say that's two and a half three tips of spin it's going to be you know a fairly significant speed so what's going to happen to this sight line the sight line is going to move in to about the quarter of this ball so regardless of which CTE approach I'm using, they're all the same, just a different approach. Uh, if it's pro one, I'm just going to move the sight line in to about this quarter. Now that can vary depending upon the performance of the shaft that you have. So, so this is going to take a you know hard speed, level Q, uh, Q tip placement just above center. Of the equator, and or the or the uh, nine to three line, and I'm going to put a lot of spin on this ball for coming here. Now you may be able to notice from the camera angle that this this ball is headed towards the pocket. Well, I noticed that. That's a scratch line. You should be aware of when you're putting the cue ball on a scratch line because you certainly don't want to send your opponent to the table with cue ball in hand. So when a situation like this arises, you need to take a precautionary uh, uh, action to make sure that your speed doesn't allow you to get into this pocket. So, so this cube also is going to come right up here very nicely with a lot of spin and a level Q just above the equator. Let's take a look at number the number two target. The number two target would be, let's see, where are we at? Right, uh, this is not right, I don't think. Yes, it is. I'll just set these up. So I'm, all right, so now we're going to have a different route for inside spin. So we're going to hit here and here, and then come to here. Well, that's a totally different route than coming here. So that means you're going to you're you're going to do something at least a little bit differently. Uh, my foundational sideline is at the edge of the ball, and I know I'm going to have to hit a lot of speed to get right here. This is actually a pretty advanced shot. I'm I'm going to put about a tip of spin on this ball with a very level cue with a, with a good tip of spin and. This cue ball is going to hit, is going to hit here, and then it's going to hook. It's going to be a hooking action here to bring it along this route. Now, what does that kind of spin and angle of my cue uh, do to the sideline? Well, actually, I'm not going to make it for this particular shot. I'm not going to make an adjustment with the sideline. I can drop down in a very level position. Uh, with with a with a nice level cue, good tip of spin, and keep the sight line intact, and then this ball is going to hit here. Then it's going to hook this way and come to here. So for the first shot, I move the sight line to here, 
For that shot, I move the sight line to here. So, um, I've got a nice mix of, of, of uh, uh, vertical spin, right vertical spin, and horizontal spin in order to accomplish this position. Okay, number three. This is an advanced shot for sure. Uh, my route here is going to take me this way. So you can see it's a, it's a different route. Now, I'm starting off with a foundational line here. Now, in order to, in order to accomplish that, this is one way to accomplish it. I'm going to uh, elevate my cue. And we're just going to be elevated and then angled into this lower right quadrant, uh, let's say about 5 o'clock. So this ball is going to hit here and it's going to go a little further up the rail, come into here and over to here. Now the angling of my cue and will, the angling of my cue will uh, serve to largely cancel out the uh, the curve and the deflection so that I can keep the sight line intact. So whether it's for Pro 1, basic CTE, disguise pitted, I will not change the sight line on this shot. Just angle my cue there and then keep the same sight line to send the uh, cue ball to this target location. Okay, number four. Okay, right here. You can already tell this is a softer shot. You know, it's sort of like a lag speed, perhaps even uh, a bit of a, 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 a of a the upper end of a finesse speed. So what's going to happen on this shot is that is that I'm going to move the sight line on this slow outside, a slow inside spin. I'm going to move the sight line out in space by about a quarter of an inch for this particular shaft in order to accomplish this two rail route to here. I'm going to use a level Q and so when I set up on this I'm just moving this sight line about a quarter of an inch out in space so that I can uh, execute this two rail route. So for one inside spin shot, we move the uh, sight line here. For the next one, uh, let's see, what was number two? Number two was the sight line stayed the same. For number three, the sideline stayed the same, and for number four, the sideline was about a quarter of an inch out in space. So, the, the, the visual part of the game really shines when you work with that sideline. You're, you're starting with a foundational sideline that's, that's objective, and you're working that sideline. And at the same time, you're very uh, intensely using a level cue or an angled cue to whatever degree along with particular tip placements. Now, the centered edge sight line for centered edge aiming is not just always the outside of the object ball. So let's say, let me just take a look at this very quickly. In addition to your 30 degree perception, you have a 15 and a 45 and a 60. Each of these, each of these visuals carry a sight line. And for the 15, the sight line is one tick past this line. 
for the 45, the sight line is one half of an inch out in space. For the for the uh, 60, the sight line is a constant 27, uh, 30 seconds of an inch out in space. It's always a constant. For whatever 45 you shoot, for whatever 60 you shoot, you're always going to have that constant sight line. So I have training cards that can help you to become very familiar with where those sight lines are. Now, there's other lines to go with those shots, but we're just discussing the sight line uh, uh, in this particular discussion. I really didn't mean for this video to be this long, but it covered a lot of material. I probably should have broken it down into two videos, but uh, I accomplished all this in one video, and that's, uh, that, that suits me just fine. So I, I'm pretty sure that all of you that watch this uh, can work with these shots a bit and advance your knowledge about how to uh, better uh, work with uh, cue ball deflection. Thank you so much.